Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a battery powered flashlight with battery pickups. So what we're going to be able to do is toggle on and off our flashlight, have it so when the flashlight is on, the battery will drain, and then also we can have our battery pickups then increase our battery power as well. And also when the battery reaches zero, it's going to turn off our flashlight. So I'll show you what this is going to look like now. So if we hit F, we can turn our flashlight on, like so, if we hit F again, it turns off and we can change how we control the flashlight so you can see as I move the camera it moves around we can change that if you want and also the battery power is going to be draining down as I have this on so if I keep talking eventually this should turn off automatically as we have run out of power and battery in it so as you can see there it just turned off automatically if I hit F I can't turn it back on as we have no battery but if I go over here hit E we've picked up a battery and we can now we can turn our flashlight back on so I'll show you how we're going to make this now. But before we get into the rest of it, this video is actually sponsored by Galsad, Galactic Salvage and Disposal. Galsad is an arcade style space flight game where the player blasts space debris, harvests energy and mines valuable ore from treasure rocks in order to score points. The developer was also kind enough to give me a free steam key, so I have played it and in my honest opinion, I love it. I think it's great and the fact that everyone's results are tracked on the leaderboard gives it that extra competitive and fun edge to it. The game is also a very cheap 99 cents on Steam, or 75 pence depending on where you're from, but it is cheap and great. The developer is also one of you, someone who learned from these videos that I'm making, and so this is very possible for you to do, so I definitely recommend checking it out and also supporting them, as like I say, this is someone just like you. So thanks so much Galsad for sponsoring this video, and make sure to follow the link in the description down below to go to their Steam store page. So our first step is going to be to open up our player blueprint. So for me, that's going to be content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character, this could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. So what we're going to do first is then go over to our viewport and what I'm going to do is add in the flashlight that we want. So what I'm going to do is go to add component and search for light and I'm going to add a spotlight. So we get a spotlight like so and the reason we're using that is because it's got this cone shape like a normal flashlight would have. And so what I'm going to do is just move it in front of the camera like so and over on the right here I'm just going to put the intensity all the way up to the max amount and that's just because my scene is very bright so I want this to be very visible but obviously change this intensity so it's good for you I think around 15,000 is quite good normally but obviously mess about with it for you and also you can change the light color so if you want it to be kind of orangey color you can do that as well so just mess about with all these settings to get them perfect attenuation radius is how far out it reaches the inner cone angle is obviously this is where it's going to be the brightest the outer cone angle is how far it reaches and all of that good stuff like so so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test this out to show you what this one's going to look like. So we have two different ways of doing this. So this is the first one. As you can see, we have our light here like so. It looks quite good. So what this is going to do is it's just going to stay in front of the player's head and just move when we move the player. So that is how we can do that. So we can just leave it there or we can parent it to the mesh. So drag and drop it on the mesh. Parent socket is head. So this is just a bit more of an advanced way of doing what we did before. So then we can just move it just to be in front of the head like so and now this will look a little bit better so now it actually looks like the player's holding it it's moving about more as we move around as well and when we're idle it will move like that as well so you can do it that way or the other way is to parent this to the camera so if you then drag and drop it onto the camera parent it like so and then if you move around you can see this can be following the camera so wherever the player the camera pointing to is where the flashlight is going to be so you can have either one of those this will all work the same and work perfectly it's just different ways of getting this to work as you can see here. So I'm going to leave it as that for the moment and then what I'm going to do is go back into my player character blueprint and go over to the event graph. And what I'm going to do first here is to be able to toggle on and off our flashlight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find some space and then also go to edit, project settings and once this loads we're going to go down to input. We're going to have to input here and we're going to create an action mapping. So if I hit plus and then I call this one flashlight or light or toggle light, anything like that and set this non to the key that you want. So I'm going to set mine to F, this could be F, E, left click, absolutely anything. And so what the action mapping does is this is just going to create an event that we can then call. So if we call flashlight, basically what it means is when we press F, it's going to fire off the code we want. And the reason I'm doing this instead of just calling the F keyboard event is because then we can add multiple buttons here, as you can see. So we can add multiple buttons, and so this can be on different consoles or just different buttons if you want. And we can also set up key bindings. So the player can then change what it is and then once you've done that what we're also going to do is create another one so we can use it later on and we're going to call this one interact so hit the plus button again and call this one interact or pick up or anything you like and i'm going to set this one to e 
so I can pick up a battery with E, like so. I'm just going to close that. And then back in the event graph here, we're going to right click and we're going to call the flashlight action mapping we just made. So we have it there like so. And after this, we're going to hold down B, left click and get a branch and plug that into the pressed of the flashlight. For the condition, all we want to do is create a boolean. So down the bottom left, we're going to hit variables, hit plus variable. And I'm going to call this one is flashlight on question mark and leave that as a boolean like so. So this is just so we can know if the light is already on or off. So we can compile, leave the default value as false. So what we're going to do is plug that into the condition there. And as we set this to false, the flashlight isn't on by default. So what we want to do is select our flashlight in the components. So this spotlight here, you can rename this if you want. And then we're just going to untick visible so that by default, this isn't visible. So the flashlight is turned off. So we compile that again. And then what we're going to do is drag and drop a reference to this light in here like so. Drag out of this and we're going to set visibility and we're going to plug that into the true and what we're going to do is we're going to leave this one as false and then after this we're going to drag and drop in our set is flashlight on and we're going to set this to false so what's going to happen is when we press f if the flashlight is on we're going to turn it off so if we just duplicate that so hold ctrl c ctrl v on all of that just the set visibility and set boolean and we'll just tick these now so set visibility new visibility to true and set is flashlight on to true as well so if we press f and our flashlight isn't on we're going to then turn it on. And so what we're going to do as well is we're just going to select the top there. So select the top spotlight, set visibility and set boolean. Right click on one of the nodes and collapse to a function. And I'm going to call this turn flashlight off like so. And then we'll do the same on the bottom. So select them, collapse to function and then turn flashlight on. And this just means we can easily call these later on if we wanted. And it just keeps it a lot neater and tidier as well. So this is now toggling on and off our flashlight done. So now we're going to set up so the battery is draining when the flashlight is on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to actually select this and comment it so we know what this does. This is toggle on slash off flashlight. And to comment something, sorry, you just select it all and press C. So now we have that there. And again, we're just going to scroll down underneath this, right click, and now we're going to add a custom event. So add custom event like so. And I'm just going to name this drain battery. And this is just a lot more efficient than coming off of event tick as you want to use event tick as minimal amount as possible. So now out of this, what we're going to do is hold down B, left click and get a branch like so. The condition again of is flashlight on, which we know from when we set them up here. So out of true, if the flashlight is on, we want to set the battery to be decreasing. So to do that, we want to hit the plus variable again to get another one. And I'm going to call this one battery. And up in the top right here, I'm going to change it from a Boolean to an integer so it's a numerical value and so then if we just drag and drop this in and drag it onto the true that will then set the battery so if the flashlight is on we're going to be setting the battery and what we want to do is to subtract from this so we'll come out of the battery there and what we're going to do is get an integer minus an integer the top value what we want to have is our battery integer there so drag and drop get battery plug that into the top value and then the bottom value is how much we want to decrease the battery by. So I want to decrease this by two. So you can change this to what if you like. This bottom value here is how much the battery is going to be decreasing by. So we can put that there like so. And that is how we're decreasing the battery. But that's only going to do that once. So what we want to do is out of this, we're going to hold down D, left click and get a delay. And this delay I'm going to set to a duration of one. And that is one second. And this is how long the interval is between decreasing the battery. So what this is going to do for me is every one second that the flashlight is on, the battery is going to go down by two. So you may want to increase the value that it goes down by and also increase the duration in between if you want or decrease these or leave them the same. It's perfectly up to you. You just find out which works best for you and perfectly balance it for you. So then out of the delay, we're going to currently complete it and we're going to call function drain battery. So what this is going to do is then this is going to create a loop. So when we're draining the battery, what we're going to do is if the flashlight is on, we're going to set the battery to minus two. We're going to set the battery to the current battery level, minus two. One second later, we're going to check that again. So if the flashlight is still on after a second, we're going to drain the battery again and just do this until the flashlight isn't on. And actually also one more thing we want to do before we call this. So what we're going to do is just before the delay as well, if we just move these out, we're going to get another branch. So we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, plug that into the set battery there. The true is going to go into the delay, and which will then obviously just go into there. The condition of this is going to be a greater than. So we get an integer is greater than an integer. The top value is going to be our battery there in the set we have. I'm just going to move this over. And the bottom will be zero. 
So what this is doing is if the battery is greater than zero, then we can do this again. So then if the battery isn't above zero, we then can't decrease the, the battery anymore as we can't use the flashlight as we have no battery left. So for false, what we want to do is then turn off flashlight, which is why we made the function earlier. So now what this is gonna do is if the flashlight is on, it's gonna get our current battery level, decrease it by two. If our battery is still above zero, it's gonna do that again. But if it's not above zero, it's just gonna turn off the flashlight and not do this again. So the battery won't be decreasing anymore. And then also, all we want to do is if our battery reaches zero, it's gonna turn off the flashlight. We want to make sure that we can't turn it back on again. So to do that, we're gonna come back up here to where we're toggling on and off our flashlight. What I'm gonna do is just give me some more space here. So I'll increase the comment size a bit like that and move these functions apart from each other like so. And off of false of this branch here, I'm gonna hold down B, left click and get another branch, plug back to the false there obviously. The condition of this is gonna be another greater than. So we're gonna come out of this and get an integer is greater than an integer. With the top one again being battery, the bottom one again being zero. So now what we're gonna do is if we want to turn the flashlight on, we can only do that if our battery is above zero. So out of true of this branch, we're gonna go into our turn flashlight on. And then out of this, what we're gonna do is call the function drain battery. So now what we're doing is if we want to turn our flashlight on, we can only do that if we have enough battery. And then when the flashlight is turned on, we're then also gonna call the drain battery here, which will again obviously only work when our flashlight's turned on. So now that should work perfectly like so. So we can just expand this comment to fit all that perfectly. And then I'll comment this as well to just drain battery level like so. And then underneath this, I'm gonna create another custom event. And this is gonna to be to increase our battery. So I'm gonna right click, add another custom event. And this one is gonna be called battery pickup. So battery pickup like so, or battery increase, regenerate, anything you want. So then out of this custom event, what I'm gonna do is simply just set the battery. So set battery like so. This is gonna be an integer plus an integer this time with the top value once again being battery as we want to be adding to our battery level to then set our battery level and the bottom value is gonna be 10 for example. So I'm gonna put this as 10, but you can put this as whatever you want. This is essentially how much you want the battery to increase by. So if this is gonna be our battery pickup, this value here is how much battery you want it to add. So you can do this as a random amount as well if you want. So you can come out of that and then get a random integer in range and you can set the minimum and maximum values for that if you wanted. So if I want the battery to be between seven and 12, I can do that. And obviously you can change this to be however you want. And then out of this, we're gonna come out the return value of that set battery. I'm gonna get a greater than or equal to. So an integer is greater than or equal to an integer. And I'm gonna set this bottom value here to be 100, but this is essentially your maximum battery value. So you can put this in a variable as well. So if we hit the plus variable again, we get max battery. So if you want the player to be able to increase their max battery with leveling up or something, you can do that, make sure it's an integer again. If we compile, we can change the default value to be 100 or whatever you want, and then put that in here like so. So what we're seeing is if the battery is greater than or equal to the maximum amount of battery they should be able to have. So also what I'm gonna do is select the battery and change this default value. So at the moment it's at zero, I want this to be 80. So the player has a bit of battery, but not full. Then after this, I'm gonna hold down B, left click and get a branch, plug that into the set there. The condition of this is gonna be this greater than or equal to. Out of true, what I'm gonna do is set the battery. So set battery like that, and I'm gonna set this to the max battery. And then out of false, I'm not gonna do anything. So what this is gonna do is when the player is picking up the battery pickup, it's gonna add a random integer between seven and 12 to their current battery level. If that then gets above their maximum battery, it will just set it to the max battery like so. And so that will then work perfectly. So again, I'm just gonna select this, comment it and call this battery pickup. You can call it whatever you like and obviously you don't need to do that either, but it just helps you to easily understand and know what everything does from a quick glance and look at it. And so now what we're gonna do is set up our battery pickup. So what we've done is we've already written a half of the code for the battery pickup. We just need to actually create it. So we're gonna minimize this. I'm gonna go into my battery folder that I have and I have already imported the battery static mesh, which I'll leave a download link to in the description down below. And I'm gonna right click, go to blueprint class and get an actor. And I'm gonna call this battery underscore BP. You can name this whatever you like, but that's what I'm gonna call it. And we're gonna open it up straight away. What we're gonna do is then add a component up on the top left and we're gonna get a static mesh. So get a static mesh like so. I'm just gonna call this battery SM for static mesh. And then over on the right, I'm gonna change the static mesh to my battery that I've imported. And obviously you don't need to do this. You can do a cube or your own static mesh, but this is just the one I have. 
It's a very quick one that I made in Blender. I'm just going to scale it up to look like that and then also maybe rotate it so that it is then facing down on its side like so. Again, use absolutely whatever you like. This is just what I'm doing. So that looks good now for now. And what I'm going to do is then also add a box collision. So add component again and get a box collision. And this is where the player has to be in order to be able to pick up this battery. So what I'm going to do is just scale this up to be the size that I want. So this is essentially the area around the battery that the player has to be in to be able to pick it up. So you can scale this up to be whatever size you like, but I think that's good for me. So I compile that and go over to the event graph. I'm going to delete these nodes here and compile, and I'm going to right click on the box collision up in the top left components, add event, add on component begin overlap, right click on it again, add event, add on component end overlap. So this is going to fire off an event every time we enter or exit the box collision. The other actor what I want to do is cast to and this is going to be our character. So for me, that's the third person character, but for you this could be first, third, whatever you've named it. It's just essentially this blueprint here where we've done all this code. So we're going to go back to that, and we're going to do that on both of them. So cast in both of these to the same character out of other actor, like so. As third person character, after this what we want to do is hold down G, left click, and get a gate. And we want to put in the cast from the begin overlap into open, the cast from the end overlap into close, like so. And then we're going to right click and call our interact action mapping that we made earlier, get the press of that into the enter of that gate like so. And what this is going to do is essentially we can only pick up this battery if we are inside the box and we press E. So this is how that's going to work and it should work perfectly like that. So if we press E and we're inside the box, it's going to work. So then after this, what we're going to do is as third person character, we're going to call function battery pickup and we're just going to plug that into the exit of this gate like so. So if we're in the box collision and we press E, we're going to call this code here to pick up our battery. And so that is basically the basic part done. But I also want to play a sound. So I'm going to come out of the battery pickup, play sound at location. And I'm just going to get the location of the battery. So I'll come out of location and get actor location like so. So this is going to get the location the battery's in and play the sound there. And then you can put whatever sound you like in. But just for testing, I'm going to put camera shutter, which is in the starter content. But again, choose whatever you like. And then out of the play sound, I'm just going to destroy actor. So destroy actor like so. And so now that is the battery pickup working as well. Just one other thing we need to do is if we select our interact action mapping here and untick consume input, this means we can then use it multiple times in multiple references. So we can have multiple instances of this blueprint, sorry. And then also up here, if we right click and get event begin play, come out of this and we're going to get a enable input with the target as self and player controller as get player controller. This is just going to allow the player to use the interact key and the E key. But other than that, this should now be working as we've set up all of our code that we need. So we just minimize this and then we can just drag and drop some of these battery blueprints in here like so. So again, get as many as you want, stylize them however you want. This is going to be working. So I get in here to test this. If I hit F, we can see that we have our flashlight on. And if I hit E over here, we're going to pick up the battery and that should have added some. So an easy way to be able to tell is if we use print strings. So what I'm going to do is get a print string here, plug that off the set battery, and then also out of the false. The in string is just going to be the battery there, like so. And then I'll do the same here. Print string, plug that in there, and plug that in there. With this, it's just the battery. So this doesn't look too neat, but this is just temporary, and this is only for us to see. So now if we do this again, we should be able to see the battery level in the top left corner. So I hit F, we see the battery is decreasing by two every second. If we go over to a battery here, pick it up, it has increased by the random amount that we wanted. So this is working perfectly. So we have our flashlight on, it's decreasing, and when we pick up a battery, it increases as well. And then we should be able to see that when it reaches zero, this should turn off and the battery level should stop decreasing as well. So we're about to hit zero, and as you can see, when we do, the flashlight is turned off and it has stopped decreasing as well. And now obviously we can't turn it back on, I've already picked up all the batteries, but if we did have batteries left, what I'm going to do just to test is it already decrease our battery level here. So I'll set this to 15. Then we can see that if our battery level goes down to zero and our flashlight turns off, when we pick up our battery, our battery level should go back up and we can turn our flashlight back on again. So it's turned off. I pick that up. It's not going down. If I turn, I can turn my flashlight back on and it'll be decreasing again. And if I turn my flashlight off, it's not going to go down any further. So that works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video. So we've done everything we wanted to do. 
as I just explained in detail there, we have our flashlight, we can turn it on and off and it will decrease when we have it on and then when it reaches zero, it will turn off like so and then we can also pick up batteries to increase our battery level like so as well. And this works perfectly as you can see and like I say, I showed you in the start as well how we can change where our flashlight will be, how it looks, its intensity, everything you need like so. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.